Hello, boys and girls. Mr. Palace here. So nice to see you. I got all, I am all brown today. Uh, brown was the color of my high school. It was brown and gold. And I know in Middletown, we're blue and white. But I still like to show those colors. Now, I have a great story for you today. It is Jacques Cousteau in Love with the Sea. Jacques Cousteau is amazing. And um, he had many TV shows way before I was even born about life, you know, in the ocean. And uh, I know I wonder about it a lot often. And uh, so he um, he was able to come up with some discoveries. All right. I like this quote for the introduction. From birth, a man carries the weight of gravity on his shoulders. He is bolted to the earth, but man has only to sink beneath the surface. He is free. And it's true because you can like float in the water, right? It's a, it's a lot easier. I remember when I was younger, I used to carry my parents in the water because the water would help out with the buoyancy. Jacques Cousteau. From the time Jacques Cousteau was a small child, he loved the sea. As he grew, this love only deepened. It led him to become an ocean explorer, as well as an inventor, writer, and filmmaker. One of his inventions, the aqualung, allowed divers to swim freely under the water for long periods. His books and films taught people all over the world about the sea and its life. Had it not been for Jacques Cousteau, we might not understand or appreciate the ocean as much as we do today. Jacques Cousteau spent his life seeking to better understand the ocean and share his knowledge and excitement about the sea with others. He filmed shipwrecks, sunken treasures, and ocean creatures from the 1940s to the 1990s, more than half a century. His explorations and films became even more adventurous. After he obtained his famous boat, the voyage of the Calypso led many watchers of Cousteau's films to fall in love with the sea, too. Look at that picture. Cousteau invented a submarine called the Diving Saucer. It's right there on the right, which could dive more than 1,100 feet deep. All right, boys and girls, I want to know, what is this called? Words that talk about a picture? Say it now. Go to caption. Over the years, Cousteau witnessed the many ways human activities damaged the places he cared for most. He became a passionate spokesman for and protector of the oceans. The Cousteau Society, which he funded in 1974, remains a leading environmental protection group to this day, with more than 100,000 members. This book looks at the life of the great explorer Jacques Cousteau. What was his early life like? What inspired him to pursue his inventions and explorations? And how did he become a spokesman for protecting the ocean? Wow. Now, this grabbed my attention. Um, as I said to you before, I, I love the octopus. I think it's so cool. Um, the shark. There's so many underwater animals I would like to learn about. So hopefully Jacques Cousteau will tell us more. Working under the waves. Cousteau knew that to make better underwater films, he needed better underwater breathing equipment. He and his partners tried many things, but none gave them the freedom they needed under the water. Cousteau's aqualung made it easy to explore the deep sea. The aqualung. Huh. Most diving equipment around at the time was heavy and complicated. Many divers wore a hard diving helmet along with a heavy suit that made it extremely difficult to move around. Divers usually breathe air pumped from the surface through a long hose. I'm going to pause for a minute. Do you guys see how these these words are a different color? Do you know what that's called? A heading, yes. And it says the aqua lung. And what's the purpose of a heading? It's about to tell us what we're going to read, right? Awesome, boys and girls. Engineers had known for a long time that to be free of clumsy equipment, divers need to carry their own air in tanks. These tanks need to be small enough for divers to carry on their backs but they also had to hold enough air to allow longer dives. A large amount of air needed to be compressed in a small space under great pressure. 
Breathing such air could be dangerous because the air could shoot out of the tank with great force and damage a diver's lungs. Cousteau adjusting the aqua lung on a diver in 1950. Oh. Yeah, because think about that. I know when I go swimming, I hold my breath and I can hold there for about 45 seconds, which seems like a long time, but that's less than a minute. And these divers need to be in the ocean, you know, deep for a longer period of time. So they definitely need to get their oxygen. Earliest ocean photos. Jacques Cousteau was not the first person to take pictures under the sea. French scientist Louis Boutin took the first underwater still photographs in 1892. Boutin's main problem was light. Sunlight does not pass through salt water, seawater easily. Boutin developed underwater flash bulbs that allowed him to take photographs 165 feet down. Cousteau and his partners solved this problem in 1943. Because gasoline for cars was hard to get during the war. One of Castillo's friends had made a device that allowed cars to run on cooking gas instead of liquid gasoline. Castillo and his friend made some changes to this device and fitted it to the tank and compressed air. The device lowered the pressure of the air, allowing just the right amount to be released from the tank every time a diver took a breath. The aqua lung was born. It allowed Cousteau to dive to depths more than 200 feet. Wow. Divers and early scuba equipment. It also led to the invention of many other types of scuba. Self-contained underwater breathing apparatus equipment. Early films. Cousteau turned more and more attention to underwater filming. He released his second film, Rex, in 1943. This movie showed... Talazine exploring a sunken freight off the coast of France. French naval leaders assigned Cousteau and his partners to explore French ships that had sunk in the war and removed mines from harbors. In their own words. I love his quotes. They're so amazing. And, and look at this picture before I even read you the quote. It looks like he's holding a fish in the water. Amazing. The best way to observe fish is to become a fish. And the best way to become a fish is to don an underwater breathing device called an aqua lung, Jacques Cousteau, from National Geographic article 1952. That is amazing. I'm a big fan of Jacques Cousteau. Throughout the 1940s, Cousteau and his team experimented with various cameras, films, flashbulbs, and underwater lights to create better movies under the sea. In 1948, they began filming in color. In 1953, Jacques published the story of the Aqualung and accounts of his undersea adventures in a book called The Silent World. In 1956, a film by the same name brought Jacques Cousteau worldwide fame. The movie was the first to show underwater scenes in color. In the first few years after World War II, Cousteau conducted all of his diving experiments in the waters of the Mediterranean Sea around France. However, he and his partners wanted to explore the open ocean. To do so, they needed a sturdy boat that could hold a large amount of scientific filming equipment. The Calypso. Cousteau found just the boat in 1950. A 139-foot-long gray ship called Calypso. That's the Calypso. Calypso and Captain Cousteau. Now look at this boat. And he has his own helicopter. Wow. And there he is, the captain of the ship. Uh, Calypso had once been used to remove underwater mines in the service of the British Navy. With money from a friend, Cousteau bought Calypso and converted it into a vessel of exploration. Calypso's crew quarters were enlarged and a crane observation platform and other new features were added. Oh, look at this. This honestly, boys and girls, is like one of my nightmares. I love sharks. They fascinate me. I could never be in one of those cages with, and that looks like a great white. TV watchers love the thrilling action of the undersea world of Jacques Cousteau. Cousteau chose the motto, we must go and see for ourselves, for his redesigned ship. Cousteau Conquers TV. In 1968, Cousteau signed a deal with the American Broadcasting Company, ABC. 
He would produce four one-hour-long television specials each year for three years. The program, called The Undersea World of Jacques Cousteau, took audiences along with Calypso as it explored the world's oceans and made many discoveries about ocean life. Viewers of The Undersea World of Jacques Cousteau saw rainbow-colored coral, fish, and other creatures that lived on tropical reefs. They thrilled to images of giant octopus and tales of sunken treasure. They learned about the mysterious behavior of sharks, whales, sea turtles, walruses, penguins, and many other animals. They watched as Calypso's crew became the first people to explore under the Arctic ice cap. The show became a huge hit and it stayed on air for nine years. There's the Calypso. The Voyage of Calypso. Over Calypso's 50-year life, it traveled more than a million miles, covering the entire globe. It made expeditions to Alaska, the Antarctic, the Caspian Sea, a large lake between Europe and Asia, and the Great Barrier Reef, which is a large coral reef off the coast of Australia. Calypso even chugged up and down the world's greatest rivers, including the Amazon, Nile, Mississippi, and Danube. And there it is. Hydraulic crane, stern back, diving saucer, the engine room, the diving locker, the photo lab, kitchen. They got a kitchen there. Captain's quarters. Awesome. Cruise quarters, radio room, the bridge where Eclipse was steered, scientist lab, underwater observation chamber. Oh, there's one more. And the bow. Protectors of Earth's Oceans. Jacques Cousteau always loved the ocean, but he wasn't always a strong protector of the sea. In his early years as an explorer, he believed that the sea was mainly a resource for people to use. Cousteau worked on an undersea exploration for oil and mining companies, sometimes using explosives that caused damage to coral reefs and the sea floor. Workers clean up a beach after an oil spill from a damaged tanker washed ashore. Some people criticized Jacques Cousteau for harming wildlife in order to get exciting scenes for his TV show. He and his crew sometimes teased animals to make them attack each other or the cameraman. Today's nature filmmakers would not treat animals this way. Growing concerns. Although some of Cousteau's early work was harmful to the environment, he generally tried to protect the ocean. During the 1950s, he sought to prevent some harmful building projects that would have damaged the ocean environment. That's the coral reef right there, boys and girls. Beautiful, right? Unfortunately, these efforts were not successful. He had better luck in getting the French government to cancel a plan to dump radioactive waste in the Mediterranean. By the late 1960s, Cousteau began to notice disturbing changes in his beloved Mediterranean. Where there once were clear waters and reefs teeming with life, he now saw barren sea floors, garbage, and murky water. These observations turned him into a spokesman for protecting the sea, the Cousteau Society. To tackle the many problems he observed, Cousteau found the Cousteau Society in 1974. The society, which is based in Virginia, educates people about the ocean. It has increased public awareness about the many environmental problems faced by the sea. The society also raises money for environmental causes and carries out scientific exploration projects. The later years. Throughout the 1970s, 1980s, and 1990s, Jacques Cousteau spent, spoke to the public and to the government leaders about protecting the ocean. He continued his voyage on the Calypso as well as on a second boat named Al Cologne. He also continued making films and writing books. Conclusion, on June 25th, 1997, at the age of 87, Cousteau died of heart failure at his home in France. People all over the world expressed grief as the passing of this remarkable man who had inspired so many others. Throughout his long life, Cousteau had courage to do things his own way. He turned misfortune into opportunity, and he tackled problems with his inventions and the new ways of doing things. He eventually opened people's eyes to the need to take better care of the ocean. These qualities made Jacques, Jacques Gilles Cousteau a hero and a role model to the world. More to explore. To see the kinds of work the Cousteau Society does, visit Cousteau.org.
that's it. Hope you enjoyed Jaku's Doughboys and Girls. And I'll see you soon.